YWCA's International Day of Peace program. My name is Nikki Stittle and I'm the program director. We are honored you have chosen to celebrate peace with us this morning. The official day for International Day of Peace is actually September 21st, but we were hoping that if we all came together this morning that you would feel inspired to pass the feeling of peace you get from our program to the people you encounter today and always. Also, we would like to encourage you to show other people how easy it is to spread peace in our community. It can be something as simple as a smile or a good job. Eleanor Roosevelt once said, it isn't enough to talk about peace, one must believe it. And it isn't enough to believe in it, one must work for it. So I leave you with just one question from Mother Teresa. What can you do to promote world peace? I'd like to welcome Marianne Kalina. She will be giving our meditation welcome prayer. Spirit within and, thank and welcome into my heart, my beloved brothers and sisters. We're here this morning to celebrate what peace we do have in our lives already, in our world, and then um, and in ourselves. And you're here because we're all striving to get more peace into the world. What I'm going to do is lead you into a meditation, a two-minute meditation. So we're going to have a pause time and a breathing, and a relaxation, and then we're gonna be still for two minutes. So I'll, I'll lead us into that. So pause and take some breath. And with each, which each, which each, with each breath, just um, allow yourself to relax into your chair. And from the top of your head to the tips of your toes, just relax and continue your breathing. And in just a little while, I'll lead you into the silence inside yourself where the peace that passes all understanding resides. You, consider, you can consider this God, the spirit, or whatever your faith beliefs are about that place deep within yourself where peace is. That's the part we want to get to today. And as we go into the silence, just know if you have thoughts that are intruding, just gently set them aside and get back to your peace. So if you will close your eyes now if you're comfortable with that and just relax into the stillness. It'll be two minutes and I'll, I'll gently encourage you to open your eyes at that point.
You want to gently bring yourself back into the room and just know that as you go about your day today and, and every day, you can um, take a two-minute pause and access that, that deep part of yourself where, where peace is and allow it to guide you to what, what you as an individual can do to help bring peace within yourself and into the world. O thou kind Lord, thou hast created all humanity from the same stock. Thou hast decreed that all shall belong to the same household. In thy holy presence they are all thy servants, and all mankind are sheltered beneath thy tabernacle. All have gathered together at thy table of bounty, all are illumined through the light of thy providence. O God, thou art kind to all. Thou hast provided for all, dost shelter all, conferest life upon all. Thou hast endowed each and all with talents and faculties, and all are submerged in the ocean of thy mercy. O thou kind Lord, unite all. Let the religions agree and make the nations one so that they may see each other as one family and the whole earth as one home. May they all live together in perfect harmony. O God, raise aloft the banner of thy oneness of mankind. O God, establish the most great peace. Cement thou, O God, the hearts together. O thou, kind Father, God, gladden our hearts through the fragrance of thy love. Brighten our eyes through the light of thy guidance. Delight our ears with the melody of thy word and shelter us all in the stronghold of thy providence. Thou art the mighty and powerful, thou art the forgiving, and thou art the one who overlooketh the shortcomings of all mankind. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, please, peace I live with you, my peace I give to you, regard no my signs by the faith of the church. I deny to give her peace and unity according to your will. Who live and reign, God, war, without O great end. spirit Amen. of our ancestors, I raise my pipe to you. And to, a, to your messengers, the four winds, and to Mother Earth, who provides to your children. Give us the wisdom to teach our children to love, to respect, and to be kind to each other so that they may grow with peace in mind. Let us learn to share all the good things that you provide for us. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Praise be to the Lord of the universe who has created us and made us into tribes and nations that we may know each other, not that we may despise each other. If the enemy incline towards peace, do thou also incline towards peace and trust in God. For the Lord is the one that heareth and knoweth all things. And the servants of God, most gracious are those who walk on the earth in humility. And when we address them, we say, Lord Jesus, who said to us, I leave you my peace, my peace I give to you. Look upon us, your sisters and brothers in Sudan, as we face this moment of referendum. Send up your spirit to do us. Give us the wisdom we need to choose our future where we will know your true peace. You call us out of slavery, oppression, and persecution so that we may have life in abundance. Grant us peace with one another. Give peace among ethnic groups. Help us to work together for the good of all. We ask this in your name, Jesus our Lord. Amen. Next, I will ask Billy Rutterer, who's an independent columnist, to come up and get be our keynote speaker. When I agreed to talk to you about peace, I didn't realize that it might be difficult some time ago, I gave a talk about racism, and now I'm wondering how eliminating racism, which is a goal of the YWCA, can relate to peace in the world. 
Checking the goals of the YWCA, I learned that the Young Women's Christian Association has, from the beginning, more than 100 years ago, been dedicated to eliminating racism, empowering women, and promoting peace, justice, freedom, and dignity for all. So obviously, there is a connection between racism and lack of peace in the world. When our blessed Savior told us to love one another as I have loved you, he didn't say that we should love only those who are like us. He meant that we must love all people. When we love all people, will there be peace in the world? When we talk about racism, what do we mean? In 1997, Pope John Paul II, who now is Saint Pope, Saint Pope John, racism is a negation of the deepest identity of the human being, who is a person created in the image and likeness of God. Prejudice is an opinion without visible means of support. Prejudice and racism affect not only African Americans, but Native Americans, Asian Americans, Latinos, and other people of color. These minorities, too, experience discrimination in housing, education, and employment. They, too, are subjected to daily to humiliation and worse. However, it is the African American who is subjected to the most degradation as a so-called inferior human being. None of us has a clue about how it must feel to know what your ancestors, to know that your ancestors were owned and traded like cattle, hogs, and other animals. How would we feel if we knew that many people still believe we are not fully human beings? I can't imagine the pain. Can you? When a former Grand Island pastor decided to run for the state legislature, he said he had no idea how much racism there is in Grand Island, Nebraska. He didn't go into detail, so we can only guess what he learned. If there were people in Grand Island who were prejudiced against Senator Ray Aguilar because of his Mexican heritage, he didn't keep it from being elected senator. As many of you know, our family includes several different ethnic cultures. Our daughter Janet Kay's first husband, Tomas Lamone, continues to live in Mexico City. Their children, Gabriel and Brenda, were born in Mexico. I don't know why the marriage failed. When the children were small, Tomas came back to the United States to earn a doctorate. Janie and the kids did not return to Mexico with him. He continued to, spend, to send support money to Janie and the kids. Another granddaughter, Megan Foz, is the granddaughter of Hector Foz and the late Jane Foz. Truly good, hardworking people, as many of you may know. When Megan was a little girl, Grandpa Hector asked her, how come you're so pretty, Megan? And she answered, because I'm Mexican, Grandpa. <laughs> Our granddaughter, Natalie's other grandmother, Katie, is from Korea. She is a delightful, wonderful woman. Does anyone discriminate against Natalie because of her obvious Oriental background? Her mother, my daughter Susie, has never said. When our eldest daughter, Leanne, and her children were shopping at Skagway, Leanne lives in New York. <clears throat> when they were shopping at Skagway many years ago, the checkout girl noticed her two curly-haired little boys and asked Leanne, is your husband black? Um, when Leanne said yeah, he was, she, the girl told her, they are hiring at Montfort's and starting wages $5 an hour. Bless her heart, the girl was trying to be helpful and had no idea that that was a racist remark. Leanne smiled and thanked her, saying, it's nice of you to tell me but my, that my husband, has, but my husband has a good job and I pay my babysitter more than that. Those were simple examples of racist remarks, but they are not the real problem. The real problem is that so many people believe those who are different are somehow inferior. Not only do they believe it, but they somehow convince the other person that they indeed are inferior because they have a different color skin, speak a different language, or that they are in some way 
not as good. When my brother Jim was a social actions director for the Air Force, part of his job was teaching different cultures to get along. After class one day, an airman asked him, but Major, if I'm not better than the black man, who am I better than? Is that part of our problem? That we feel we must be better than another person to be okay? Must we look down on others to improve our self-esteem? Racism is so deeply ingrained in Nebraska culture that it wasn't until the year 2000 that a person of Mexican heritage was elected to the unicameral. There's only one African-American senator in the legislature, Ernie Chambers. Senator Chambers often turns people off with his rhetoric and angry attitude. If we listen to what he says, he usually makes good sense. Sometimes we wonder why he is so angry. I'll give you an example of what goes on. A few years ago, I was in Kansas City and stopped for lunch. I happened to sit a few booths away from uh, a couple of, of men who I presumed were businessmen. One was apparently from Missouri and the other from another state. They were discussing football. And one said to the other, I'll bet my niggers can beat your niggers. Ooh. If I've heard that kind of name calling, you can bet Ernie, Ernie Chambers has too. And I has, suspect it has been much worse. A few years ago, I heard a really nice woman say, for some reason, I don't trust black people. I can't because can't believe they were honest. Ooh. Did she know that was a racist remark? Probably not. I was att attempted to question her. I attempted to, qu was tempted, I didn't do it. I was tempted to question her, but chose not to say anything. What could I or should I have said? How did we get this way? Is it because Af African Americans were slaves for so many years? Is it because they have darker skin? Do we feel superior to our Mexican-American or Asian-American neighbors because they have a different color pigment in their skin and may have an accent or speak a different language? Do we understand that they bleed just as we do? Their hearts can be broken as easily as ours. It's well past time for us to take a good, long, hard look at our prejudice and our racist attitudes. We must develop empathy for others learning to feel as they feel, and we must truly learn to love. You don't have to physically have, hug everyone you meet, although it would hurt. <laughs> Mother Teresa of Calcutta said, one of the greatest gifts we can give is a smile. It doesn't cost anything, and it spreads from one person to the next. If we smile and take our neighbors into our hearts as we we will no longer think of them and us. We will understand what it means to be all God's children. For us at least, racism and prejudice will be a thing of the past and maybe we can pass it on. When we recognize our own racist attitudes, perhaps we will understand the goals of the World YWCA. A global network of women and girls working for justice peace, health, human dignity, Somebody freedom, real. and care for the environment. A little shy, so we're not going to get a song in, but he wanted to come up here and talk with me. So he is going to help me introduce Dory Bush, who is going to read the poem for our world, a uh, poem by Maddie Stepanek. Can you say thank you? No? Okay. That's okay. For our world, a poem by Maddie Stepanek. We need to stop, just stop. Stop for a moment before anybody says or does anything that may hurt anyone else. We need to be silent, silent for a moment before we forever lose the blessing of songs that grow in our hearts. We need to notice just notice. 
Notice for a moment before the future slips away into ashes and the dust of humility. Stop, be silent, and notice. In so many ways, we are the same. Our differences are unique treasures. We have, we are, a mosaic of gifts to nurture, to offer, to accept. We need to be, just be. Be for a moment, kind and gentle, innocent and trusting, like children and lambs, never judging and vengeful, like the judging and vengeful. And now, let us pray. Differently, yet together. Before there is no earth, no life, no chance for peace. He was a little boy. He was about eight or nine years old. He had a terminal disease, and he wrote several books, and he was very profound. Had been on Oprah and a lot of, of different things because he just was so in touch with what all of us should probably be in touch with. Um, as Billy said, our mission is to eliminate racism, empower women, and promote peace, justice, freedom, and dignity for all. And so many of the things I think that divide us are the things like Billy talked about, cultural and um, country I identity, um, sexual orientation, beliefs on that, our gender, our ability, our country of origin, and religion. I read this, and I, I don't know if, the, I think this is just a guy who might be, he's a motivational speaker, that's all I could find about him, but I loved what he said, and his name is Cory Booker. He said, before you speak to me about your religion, first show it to me in how you treat other people. Before you tell me how much you love your God, show me how much you love all his children. Before you preach to me of your passion for your faith, teach me about it through your compassion for your neighbors. In the end, I'm not as interested in what you have to tell or sell as in how you choose to live and give. And I thought, how profound is that? Um, one thing I have always admired about the Baha'i faith is that I believe that that is whole, the whole tenet of your religion, isn't it, is love one another. And I, I love that. Way back to ethnic festival days. Uh, Mother Teresa was asked to, and I'm sure you guys know this story, she was asked to participate in a protest against the war at one point in her life. And she said no. She said, but if you ever have a rally for peace, I will be there. <laughs> and so I like that, that you have to focus on the peace part of it and what we can do. Peace begins with every one of us if we just treat each other with respect and love and caring and compassion. Um, if we would quit uh, making assumptions about a group of people based on our perception or interaction with one person of that group. So often somebody doesn't like an entire group because of one person and what one person said, and we need to let go of that. We need to come together. It was interesting when I was looking for peace songs, uh, the Beatles, Come Together, came up, and I was like, yeah. There were a lot of peace songs back then in my time, so that was kind of cool. Um, in your program, there is the Gandhi Prayer for Peace. And you can read through that, but again, very profound, very simple. I offer you peace, I offer you love, I offer you friendship, I see your beauty, I hear your need, I feel my, your feelings, my wisdom flows from the highest source, I salute that source in you, let us work together for unity and love. Please be sure the sheets that are on your table, if you would sign in on those, that would help us a lot if we knew who was all here today or Barrett take a picture of the whole group <laughs> one of the two um, I appreciate your being here and your desire to demonstrate um, your wish for peace by your presence here today I know some of you got up very early some of you have the day off and came anyway I appreciate that um, you know if we could each just let our light shine if, if you're here you believe in this so you wouldn't be up this time of day Okay? You wouldn't be a little bit late for work. We're going to have you out of here so you can be to work by 8. But, um, so I know, I know this is important to you or you wouldn't be here. So thank you for that. And if we just go out there and, just as Billy said, treat each other a little better, say hi, smile, strike up a conversation with somebody you don't know, there are so many ways we can just join together. Um, Gandhi also said, uh, be the change you wish to see in the world. So if we truly do want to have peace in our world, perhaps we can.